Welcome back to the last video in this unit and since we looked at addition last time we're probably going to look at subtraction today so um, let's just get started right away here let's say suppose Liam swam four and four tenths of a kilometer on Thursday and one and six tenths of a kilometer on Tuesday he's a long distance swimmer uh, how much farther did Liam swim on Thursday well before we find the exact answer maybe it's a good idea to find an estimate of the distance and so we can say four and four tenths is close to four and one and six tenths is close to two we round up so we're going to say four minus two is two so we swam about two kilometers on thursday but if we're going to find the real answer we're going to use some whole number strategies that you've seen before probably in the past so i'm going to use something called base 10 blocks and i'm going to draw them out just because it's a little bit easier for me on the smart board, but we have ones and we have tenths. I'll just do O for ones and THS for tenths. And so we have four and four tenths to start. And we're subtracting one and six tenths. Well, to do that, the first thing I have to look at is, do I even have six tenths? And I don't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these guys and I'm going to trade them for 10 more tenths 5 6 7 8 9 10 all right now I can now take away my 1 and 1 6 sorry 1 and 6 tenths so I'm going to now remember this one doesn't exist anymore so I'm going to take this guy away and I'm going to take 6 tenths away Take those away. And what am I left with? I'm left with two ones. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So two and eight tenths of a kilometer is how much more he swam on Thursday. We could also do something called subtracting from right to left. And we're going to try and regroup with this. So we had four, four tenths minus one and six tenths. And so I'm going to go this direction. I cannot do 4 minus 6, so I'm going to borrow from, yes, the 3, even though there's a decimal there. And maybe as a good sign, we should probably put the decimal in line there. So I have now 14 minus 6, which is 8. 3 minus 1 is 2. So again, he swam 2 and, two and 8 tenths of a kilometer more on Thursday. And then we can use something called mental math, and I'm going to put slash logic. So let's think in our head, if we start at the lower number, one and six tenths, we're going to try and jump to a whole number here. Well, how can I get to the next whole number? I would have to add four tenths, and that would make it two. So we have added four tenths. Now I'm trying to get to four and four tenths. Well, I need, let's say, go to four. And if I go to four, I'm adding two. So now I need to get to four and four tenths. Once you do that again, I'm adding four tenths. And if I add these guys, I have two and eight tenths of a kilometer. So in this method, we're just trying to first get to the first whole number, and then we're going to try and get to the whole number, which is closest to the decimal end point. And then we just add the little bit left over. I'm going to get you to try one. Sally has a goldfish that has a mass of three and four tenths of a kilogram. Yes, that's a large goldfish, but Kayla has a monster goldfish that has a mass of five and two tenths of a kilogram. Whose goldfish has a greater mass and how much greater is it? Well, clearly Kayla's goldfish is the bigger fish, its greatest mass. So we know that answer just from reading the question, but how much greater is it? So if you could pause it, try one of those strategies we just looked at, one of those three strategies, so base 10 blocks, or the right to left regrouping method, or just the jumping around mental math method. You decide, pause it, come back when you're ready. Okay, so if you had the base 10, so we had the ones and the tenths, there was five ones to start. 
and two rods. And we're taking away three and four tents. Now I don't have four tents to take away, so I'm gonna trade this guy in here for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more. And now I can take away the three and four tenths. Those three go away. And I have to take four tenths away. So let's there's four there. So I'm left with one in the ones column and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the tenths column. So it is one and eight tenths of a kilogram greater. Now I'm going to make some room here. So I'll move that one, one and eight tenths. Maybe I'll write it up here. That is kind of our answer. Uh, the right to left method. So we just write the larger number on top, subtract the lesser number, put our decimal right away. Two minus four, I can't do that. I'm gonna borrow 12 minus four is eight, four minus three is one. Same answer, good, we're on the right track. And then that uh, mental math method, we start at the lower number, three and four and tenths. I'm going to jump to the next whole number and the next whole number would be four, but how much more does it cost to get to four? It would cost six tenths. Now I'm trying to get to five and two tenths. So to uh, get to five, I add plus one and to get to five, and two tenths, I would add two tenths. And if I add those all together, one plus six tenths plus two tenths, again, one and eight tenths of a kilogram. So, um, Kayla's goldfish has a greater mass with, sorry, maybe by one and eight tenths of a kilogram. Now let's deal with those pesky hundredths and we're gonna revisit some of the questions that we looked at in last video. Um, just to remind you, we're gonna use some money again. So money uses base 10 with tenths and hundredths. So we remember we had dollar as our whole. We had uh, dimes as a tenth or of a dollar. We had pennies, which don't exist in Canada anymore, as a hundredth of a dollar. So back to that question we had before, I added a little bit more though. Jamie bought a toy dinosaur for $3.49 and a toy water gun for $2.99. How much did Jamie spend altogether? Well, suppose she pays with a $10 bill. How much change will she receive? So you know when you go to the store and you have more money that costs, they're supposed to give you the money back. We call that change. Now. Back when I was a kid, cashiers would like to count back the money to ensure that they did it properly because they didn't always have a scanner and a computer on board that told them exactly how much to do. We're kind of getting a little lazy in, in technology here, but um, what we would do is we'd count back and we can call it count on. So we had, um, well, first it was $3.49, which we, sorry, that little dot sounds like a decimal. Um, and we were adding this up. And I believe one plus four plus nine, sorry, four. And we carry the one. So it was $6.48. So that's where we get the $6.48. Well, if we add to the next um, coin, so I can add two pennies to get to $6.50. I would add two quarters, which is 50 cents to $7. So we're kind of going like this. Then I add a dollar to get to $8 and to get to ten dollars i would add another two dollars and if we add all this money up you know two plus one plus fifty plus two the amount of change that would be given back if she give ten dollars is three dollars and fifty two cents now we could also doing um something that right to left method and again we had six dollars and 48 cents but she started with ten Again, it's important that we line up all our digits. We're gonna have two digits um, after the decimal here. Now here the problem is we have a lot of zeros minus something. So we're gonna have to borrow all the way back to this one. It becomes a zero. This guy becomes a 10, but remember he has to borrow to someone, you know, give away to someone else. So it becomes a nine. This becomes a 10, but he needs to give one away. So he comes a nine too. It's 10 minus eight is two. Nine minus four is five. 
9 minus 6 is 3, and there's our $3.52 again. So I'm going to get you to try one. I'm going to show you both ways, but um, we had this problem in the last video. Alice went to the grocery store to buy a couple of items for her mother. She needs to buy bread and milk. How much will she spend? Now what I've added is how much change will she receive from $5? And suppose she needs to buy beans as well. So she's how much change would she give get from $5? But let's say to do another part of the question, she adds the beans as well. Will $5 be enough? If not, how much change will she, will she receive from $10? Um, there might be some foreshadowing there. So step by step here, you need to add up the, the bread and milk, which we did in the last video, but I'm going to get you to do it again. Then how much change would you get from a $5 bill? We'll figure that out. Then I want you to add the price of a can of beans to the milk and the bread, and we'll see if five is enough. And if not, how much change from a $10 bill? Hopefully that's not too many steps there. Please pause it, come back when you're ready. Okay, so the the milk and the bread, three sixty five and ninety nine cents. Um, it's fourteen. That is sixteen. Yeah, so it was four sixty four. Now, uh, how much change will she receive from five dollars? Let's just go from this question here. Um, so the two methods we had to count on. So if I have four. 64 maybe I want to get to that 465 I'll add a penny and then if I actually it's probably better if I put a dollars now I want to get to the nearest um, dollar so or the next coin I could add quarter and a quarter will get us to four dollars and ninety cents so it's at a quarter and then to get to five dollars all I have to do is add a dime now if I add all these three guys up a quarter plus a dime plus a penny that is 36 cents back in change now the other method here was the right to left so I'm gonna do five dollars minus four dollars and 64 cents i'm going to put my decimal place right away i have to borrow all the way from the whole dollar this is going to become a 10 but it becomes a nine right away 10 minus four is six nine minus six is three and then zero you know four minus four is zero so three you know 36 cents is the answer there now part two here is she wants this can of beans here so it was 464 but she wants the can of beans which is a dollar 46 and so that becomes a zero because 10 1 plus 6 plus 4 is 11 and then we have 1 plus 4 plus 1 is 1 plus 4 plus 1 is 6 so six dollars and ten cents so clearly is five dollars enough no so she wants to use ten dollars now and so um if we're gonna do the the count on we're at six dollars and ten cents i want to add maybe uh, a, a nickel that'll get me to 615 i'm gonna add add a dime that will be six dollars and 25 cents I'm going to add three quarters to 75 cents. That'll get me to $7. And then I need to add, so from $7, I need to add, let's say, a loony, $1. And that will get me to $8. And then I add a toonie, which will get me to $10. So a nickel plus a dime plus. 75 cents plus a dollar plus two dollars well let's add the coins first 75 cents plus five cents is 80 cents plus 10 cents is 90 cents plus a dollar plus two dollars so two dollars and 90 cents but counting it back now if this is too much mental math for you um six dollars and ten cents we gotta remember that 
we can do the right to left method. So $10 minus $6 and 10 cents. Well, zero minus zero is zero, but zero minus one I can't do. I can't borrow from the next zero, so I'm gonna go all the way over here. This becomes a 10, but becomes a nine because we need to give it to this guy. This becomes uh, 10 minus one is nine. Put our decimal there, nine minus six is three. So $3.90 is our answer, how much change she would get back. So in this video, we looked at subtracting decimals. We looked at subtracting with um, tenths using base 10 blocks and the right to left method with regrouping. With dealing with hundredths, we just opened it up to counting our change back or just simply the right to me left method. Now the right to left method I should mention is kind of the traditional method your parents and all your teachers would know this very well. Um, so it maybe is the, the easier strategy. Nothing has really changed with, let's say I did a you know, thousand minus 610. Nothing is really different. All we do is have this decimal in the way, just make sure we put it in the right spot on the way back. There you have it. Please remember in life math happens and I'll see you in the next unit. Thank you.